Hey, uh, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another horse episode. I'm tired. It's been a long day, but let's get into it. And, uh, this video is coming out in October. It's only September. I've been doing all this um, content, though. I've been keeping it uh, kind of same day, a month ahead. So, like, today is September 15th. This is coming out on... October 16th, so we're a day ahead, uh, it's a month, it's weird. <laughs> Doing my first D&D match tomorrow, I'm super excited. Got a bunch of friends at school. Pretty pog, all right. Climbing the building. Yep, yep. How do you... That was satisfying. How do you, how do you expect me to, uh, apparently like that? Oh, uh, of course. Milk truck! Jump. Ah, that's good stuff. Nope. Like I said, I'm tired, guys. So my perception is a deception. So, uh, The man didn't look like a thief, but maybe his striped jumper was in the wash. Mr. Silton was certain he'd stolen the van, though, so I watched for a moment. But then I heard Mr. Silton climbing up. I was going to speak, but Mr. Silton held a finger up to his lips. He looked incredibly serious for a moment. One swift movement, and we were inside. Mr. Silton whispered that I was to go one way while he went another. Why are you whispering? I asked him. Where are we going? Find the keys to my van, Robocop, said Mr. Silton through gritted teeth. Well done. Why did I do that to myself? The piles of junk were all wired into the mains. I suppose it was a good deterrent against thieves. Yeah. Thank you. 
Oh, it's just sensory. Alice would have felt at home here, with all the huge piles of junk everywhere. I didn't know which key I should take, so I took all of them.
barely managed to collect all of the keys. Ah, fuck. As soon as I heard the gunshot, I knew I needed to go back and find Mr. Silton. to the electrical current. That was confusing for a second. Use it again, god damn it. It's literally not that hard. My brain just isn't going at the right time.
Thank you. Fucking kidding me. The old man was pointing an even older gun right at Mr. Silton's face. But the man looked terrified when he saw me. I can still picture his hand shaking as he reloaded his ancient firearm. This wasn't the plan, shouted Mr. Silton. It's him or me. Let him have it. I didn't know what I was going to do when I caught the old man. But I knew I had to stop him. Ow. If someone dared hurt my friends, they would have to pay. I don't know, Mr. Shelton's kind of using you right now, bud. I kept turning the events over in my mind. Could I have handled things differently? Could I save Mr. Silton without hurting that man? Mr. Preston could see I was upset, and said music was a good alternative to facing up to problems. Come with me, he insisted, I'm going to teach you how to play drums. First, he said, just play the bass drum along with me. We'll see how good your timing is. Play the beat. Mr. Preston asked, were you happy with that or would you like to try? 
Give each dragon oh, you want to get a feel for them. Continued Mr. Preston. Watch me play the notes as they hit the dock, like this. Now you try. Mr. Preston asked. Cool! I'm assuming this song is copyright because it is not playing. I can't, there's too many things happening. Well, would you like to try again? No. No. Mr. Silton was patched up, but still pretty angry. He referred to the man as a word that wasn't in my dictionary file. It should have been between canny and cup. I reminded Mr. Silton about going to find the others now we had the ban. But he said there was something even more important we had to do first. Mr. Silton explained that it was a good idea that Mr. Logan be released from prison early, and that this wouldn't involve a parole board, but might involve dynamite. Straight away I was apprehensive. I thought only bad people went to prison, I knew Mr. Logan was the guitarist in Mr. Silton's band, but why would we help a bad person? In the end, I think it's only Mrs. Silton's smile that convinced me to help. Mrs. Silton promised to have a present for us when we got back. She said she'd been saving her money from her decorating job. I didn't know what I would need money for, but then realized, if nothing else, new games consoles must be out. Be careful, said Mrs. Silton with a big smile. Don't rob any post offices, and don't get shot. In the dead of night, it was surprisingly easy to get close to the prison building. Mr. Silton said it was like the Death Star and had a weakness we could exploit. Although I seem to remember the robot getting shot when they did that in the film. But there was no time to worry as Mr. Silton pressed a walkie-talkie into my hand and said, Good luck. A false friend in a shadow tenderly while the sun shines. Benjamin Franklin, interesting. easier for my story. <laughs> oh, 
Ah, you bitch. I'm fine. It was obvious the security lights would set off an alarm. I needed to find somewhere to hide, or the guards would kill me. Ah, oh, fuck! I don't know where to go! Wait. How do I get up? Shit. Um. Am I even supposed to be in this area? Ooh. Help. Doesn't look like fun. How the frick? I don't know. Okay. Oh. I 
According to Mr. Sultan, this was the switch that would open the laser door to Mr. Logan's cell block. According. Yeah. See, there's a light, and then there's an actual security part of it. Oh god, it goes all the way up. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I hit the alarm override button. It's not doing anything. Absolutely useless. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, why would I come into this room then? Mr. Silton seemed to think this would open the cell block door. Luckily, he was right. Oh, wait. Okay. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Logan's cell was locked, but, thanks to my speedy brain, I was able to hack it in seconds. Mr. Logan was not pleased to see me. No one ever was. But I couldn't work out why. However, when I mentioned Mr. Silton, he soon cheered up. We quickly made our way outside. Although I wasn't sure about Mr. Logan's stealth techniques, they were quite different from mine. But, someone must have noticed Mr. Logan was missing. As, with a bright flash, we were soon attacked. This still wasn't the plan, said Mr. Silton as he insisted he was okay, and that, no, I didn't need to clean up the trail of blood. He did however urge me to take care of the huge tank bearing down on us. into the van. Mr. Logan and Mr. Preston took out large guns as Mr. Silton gave me some driving software. It basically explained that one foot pump made the van go, and the other one signaled Mr. Logan and Preston to fire their guns.
full driving mechanics, I gotta say. I hope that all the bullets fired led to non-fatal wounds, but statistically that was incredibly unlikely. Strangely, I felt too excited and relieved to care. Mr. Silton winced as he clutched his bleeding shoulder and explained how you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. I think broken eggs meant dead people. Sometimes, he said, you have to do whatever it takes to survive, even if that means killing. But not innocent people, said Mr. Logan as he stared straight ahead. Eventually, I asked Mr. Logan what he had done to end up in prison, but he just continued staring out of the window. Mr. Preston smiled as he said, I suppose someone should explain. He told me when the war started, he and Mr. Silton had avoided conscription, but Mr. Logan was called up. His unit's first orders were to sweep through a huge urban area, killing anything that moved. The only trouble was, hundreds of refugees had recently taken shelter there. The generals knew that those people were there, said Mr. Preston, but they couldn't have cared less. This isn't the time for another one of your conspiracy theories, interrupted Mr. Silton. Although this obviously annoyed Mr. Preston, he continued explaining how Mr. Logan and another man deserted, and, after a poor attempt to hide in a wooden vaulting horse, the pair of them were caught at gunpoint on a train, whilst trying to speak rudimentary German. Mr. Logan guided us down a small side street as Mr. Preston complained that he needed the toilet. Mr. Silton asked why we were taking the scenic route while he was trying not to bleed to death. But Mr. Logan gave Mr. Silton a quick glance. You're fine, he said with the faintest of smiles. Soon the night sky was full of twinkling stars and I was able to impress everyone with my navigation skills. The software was state of the art. But I remember Heather telling me how the ancients had used the stars in much the same way. It always made me smile, thinking about the names she gave the constellations. It was the middle of the night by the time we got back, but Mrs. Silton was still up waiting for us. Really, again, in the same place, was all she said as she shook her head and tended to Mr. Silton's second bullet wound. Mr. Preston nearly knocked us over as he sprinted towards the bathroom. It appeared that his body had kept on making urine, even though it didn't have anywhere left to store it. I asked Mr. Silton about Heather and the old lady, but he said he was just about to wash his hair. When I asked him again later, he said the main thing was that we'd got Logan and the van back, and couldn't the rest wait until I had cleaned up the band room for him. I didn't know what to say. Everything we had done, everything I had helped him with, I thought it was all to get everyone back together. But now I didn't know what to think. Before I could say anything, Mrs. Silton explained that it was okay if I only traveled on trains and was alone. I must have looked worried as Mrs. Silton smiled and continued, If you really want these idiots to go with you, they can disguise themselves and catch the next train after you. Mr. Silton was dismissive, and said I'd get nowhere without proper ID. They'll be stopping robots for even the tiniest of things, he said. And a robot passport costs a fortune these days. Well, said Mrs. Silton, it's a good job I've got this. Mr. Silton looked confused and asked where Mrs. Silton got the money. Sometimes, said Mrs. Silton, when God slams a door in your face and shoots you twice in the shoulder, he opens a window. Mrs. Silton explained how Preston had given her the extra money. He said there was good money to be made selling pills and powder to people that distracted them from the world being an absolute mess. Bedtime, said Mr. Logan as he carried his guitar into his room. Everyone else left one by one, leaving me stroking the dog. Okay, I'm going to save that there. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.